Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Property Chat. My name's Ken Hume. And I'm James Hume. We're James Alexander. This week, interest rates. Are they going to go up, stay the same? What does it mean? Stand by. Well, welcome back everybody. Another edition of Property Chat with Ken and James Hume from James Alexander, just talking about relevant subjects in the property market right now. What everyone's thinking about is interest rates, James. Yeah, so latest kind of, everyone thinks they're gonna go up. Obviously the um, the GTP, GDP was a bit hard and expected, therefore kind of increasing the likeliness of um, interest rates going up. But uh, what does this mean for most kind of people day to day? What do yeah. interest rates rising actually mean for the average person? Yeah, good point. So what will it mean to you personally? How might it impact your mortgage? Well, the good news if you're on a fixed rate is it won't affect your mortgage at all. If you're not on a fixed rate, given that mortgage rates are historically at a very low point right now, very good time on your residential mortgage to think about actually fixing your rate for a period of time uh, to negate any effect of a possible interest rate rise. It's by no means certain that they'll raise rates, raise rates, but it's likely that they might. Um, as far as that's concerned, it's likely to be a very small rise as well, I think. We could be looking at as little as a quarter of a point, which won't make a massive difference anyway to your mortgage. But clearly that would be a signal from the Bank of England that rates are heading in a certain direction. And this may affect longer term fixed rates with banks and building societies. So a couple of things you should be doing right now. Number one, look at your own residential mortgage. If you've got a mortgage and it's not on a fixed rate, very good time to be researching that for better rates. Number two, if you have a buy-to-let portfolio or even a single buy-to-let property, if you're outside of a fixed rate period, could be a good time to look at locking in right now, James. Yeah, well, we just had someone this week um, who actually said to me that he was he was purchasing a buy-to-let for that exact reason, so he could lock in a five-year period on yeah. that. So it's not a bad time to buy right now if you were looking to lock in a fixed rate at 0.25% rather than... We, we've never, yeah, we've never seen rates historically at this level. Some of the uh, fixed rates for longer terms are really, really good, and uh, we expect those to start drying up if interest rates do go up. So, you know, as well as the fact that the market's a little bit quieter, it could be a really good time for you if you're a first-time borrower or maybe buy-to-let investor to actually get in and get a really good rate and therefore increase your return if you're a buy-to-let investor, or indeed cherry-pick if you're a first-time buyer. So next, next up, we've got help to buy benefits builders profit. So this is a story which um, the government obviously set up a help to buy a scheme to try and help uh, people that are trying to get onto the property ladder, but it's kind of done the reverse of that and just helped the people above the actual yeah. first time buyers, which are the house builders. They've increased their profits by the exact same percentage uh, or they've increased their, sorry, what was it? What was the actual headline? And on the that headline one? is that they've increased their profits by uh, 15%. And what's interesting about that is it would appear that exactly the amount that the government have provided in incentive has been taken by the builders. Well, it's no surprise, is it? You say to a builder, we're going to give your buyers a deposit, and what do the builders do? They whack that straight onto the price of those very products. You know, so therefore, help to buy is not helping people. What it's doing is increasing prices for first-time buyers. And yes, first-time buyers get the deposit, it may get them on the ladder, but in fact, they're paying 10% more than they would if the scheme wasn't there. So clearly, it doesn't work. So what can we do instead? Well. I have an opinion on this and I'm hoping that uh, in the autumn statement which is coming up shortly, the Chancellor may agree. We talked about um, stamp duty and its unfairness to first time buyers, haven't we James, in the mm. past. And one of the things that I've thought for a long time is, why do first time buyers have to pay stamp duty? If you think about it, it's not logical. The seller of the property they're buying is likely to have equity and profit in that sale. So it makes more sense to me if the seller pays the stamp duty of the buyer and that goes up the chain. So you could say, well, that's unfair on the seller, but actually the seller is probably buying another property too. And guess what? Their seller will be paying their duty. So therefore it would even out. But more importantly, the chains don't move unless the bottom of the chain kicks it off. And that brings the first time buyers into the market and kicks off the whole thing. We have heard that there are announcements likely as far as stamp duty is concerned. I hope they go far enough. For me, an outright cut in stamp duty for first time buyers is what's needed. Yeah, well, I think we actually looked, I think the average uh, first time buyer stamp duty cost was about £11,000. So if you had to take that out of the equation, it would bring in a lot more first time buyers into the market. Saving up £11,000 for a first time buyer, it's a lot harder for someone that's selling answer. a second property to yeah. find the actual money to do that when you're moving on to a new one. Definitely. And I think the other thing is that we know from government policy in the past that every time they make a new rule to try and solve the housing market, which they're not very good at, by the way, uh, it tends to backfire on them. And if they put a deadline on something like this, say, right, we're going to reduce stamp duty for first-time buyers until this date, what happens is that we get 
inflation up to the point where that deal ends. And I think it's much better to just do it and not have a, a fixed point of uh, when you're going to withdraw it to just experiment and see how it works without having that problem of the bubble creation that some worry about. Next headlines, help to buy builders profits are done. We're now looking at tenants. Now this is an interesting one, James. Again, it's on the subject of first time buyers really, isn't it, same thing? Yeah, this one talks about um, people who are paying rent. So someone might be paying 1,200 a month in rent um, for the last five years, but they might get a mortgage knock back of them paying say 900 or, or 1,000 a month in rent. Yeah. Uh, in mortgage, sorry, rather than rental payments, but they can't obviously use that to show that they can pay it to the actual mortgage lender. Which seems crazy, doesn't it? I mean, you know, you can look at their credit record of how they've done against the loan that they might have taken for £5,000 with payments of £100 a month, but their biggest, most significant expense is not taken into account on their credit report. I mean, that's ludicrous and seems very unfair to the va vast majority, I should say. We've got some great tenants paying massively high rents that would love to get onto the housing market but unfortunately even though they're paying up to 16 1700 pounds per calendar month in rent they can't get a mortgage of a thousand pounds per month seems crazy doesn't yeah it? no it does seem like a strange one but it yeah. is what it is for the time being yeah well we'd like to see that change but uh, yeah remains to be seen uh, long-term mortgages well this is no surprise is it James really yeah I mean 25 year mortgages are a kind of standard rate for most people and that's obviously a huge commitment to to go ahead yeah. with now the actual mortgage brokers at the moment are saying, I think it's seven out of 10 uh, mortgage brokers have been saying they've seen an increase in mortgages from 35 to 40 year terms, yeah, which obviously shocking. lowers the monthly payment, but obviously yeah. it takes you into a much longer mortgage than your usual 25, maybe 30 year mortgage. Yeah, I mean, I, I have mixed feelings about this. I mean, if it makes it affordable for buyers, then I'm all for it. Um, obviously the idea, it's like a prison sentence, isn't it? You know, you're locked into this for 30 or 40 years. I think the key thing to think is not about the lock-in period because that will always scare you. Because quite frankly, isn't 25 years as scary as 30 or 40? It's still, yeah. it's still way into the long grass for most people, isn't it? So therefore, I think that it's probably a good thing in the sense that at least it makes mortgages affordable for those that perhaps couldn't make it if it were down at 25 years. But it does seem shocking. My advice always to buyers when they ask me is, well, look, don't look at the fact of the term of the mortgage. The only question you should be asking yourself is, can I comfortably afford the repayments? And if you can do that, then actually that's the number you should be looking at. Can I afford the repayments and lock into a good rate over a long period of time? And then you know you've got security there. So yeah, interesting stuff. One I picked up this week from the uh, papers as well, which I thought was quite interesting, came out today. The House of Commons Register of Interest, James. Did you see this? I didn't actually read too much into this one, to be honest. I, I, I briefly looked over it. What, what was the kind of... Well, Prime Minister Theresa May is earning at least an extra £10,000 a year renting out a central London flat she owns with her husband. I just thought it's interesting that um, Theresa May is actually a buy-to-let investor. You wouldn't think so, would you, given current... Uh, government policy, <laughs> but I have a suspicion that she might not have a very large mortgage and therefore it wouldn't affect her directly uh, the new implications of the rule she's put in place. But um, makes a bit of a cynic really, but there we are. That's just an interesting uh, side effect of, um, of things. As far as mortgages are concerned as well, we notice now 100% mortgages for students. This is a new thing. Interesting, James. Yes, yeah, an interesting new thing. Building societies are prepared to lend 100% um, on behalf of students, isn't that right? That's right, yeah. And what they're doing is they're saying that if you've got financial support from a parent or a grandparent, then they'll lend the whole amount and the family member will have to guarantee that if you don't make those payments, they will step in and make them for you, which seems completely fair enough. And actually, it saves that deposit and for students as well. So great deal from the Loughborough. Um, really impressed with that and hopefully some people will take advantage of that. So well, I think that's it for yeah, news this week, isn't it, James? Yeah, that pretty much covers everything we had to go through this week. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, if you're looking to sell or rent your property or you want some general advice, then we're always here um, to speak with you and always delighted to do so. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.